Preservation Aviation, located in Burbank, California, was at one time the largest broker of antique aviation gauges and dials in the nation, with an inventory of almost a million and a half instruments. Unfortunately, much of Preservation Aviation's supply, which was housed in a structure and an open yard, was contaminated with phosphorescent paint containing radium-226. The glow-in-the-dark gauges helped pilots navigate at night. Roger. Out. The facility has been here since 1957 and was sold in 1996 to its current owner. Around that time, the current owner sent a large amount of material to a scrap metal yard at which time it set off the radiation detectors and caused the site to come to regulatory attention. The initial assessment revealed gamma radiation exposure rates inside the 10,000 square foot masonry structure ranging from 100 to 500 times ambient background measurements and radon levels 25 times the U.S. EPA limits for unlicensed facilities. In the yard, gamma radiation rates exceeded 250 times the background rates. EPA immediately began an emergency stabilization under the OSC's warrant authority, removing high-level radiological items away from the site boundary to lower the perimeter gamma radiation dose rate. The team also began bulking highly combustible materials to eliminate the threat of a fire and the resulting fallout from a radioactive plume. With the emergency stabilization and assessment complete, the team began the challenging task of removing radiation-containing materials from the yard. To reduce the volume being shipped to radioactive waste-approved landfills, which increases cost, each instrument needed to be segregated into one of three waste streams. To survey items, the team assembled monitoring stations shielded by water walls constructed of five-gallon buckets sandwiched between plywood. The walls helped limit the influence of background radiation and at the same time protected workers. The item is taken behind the barrier into the low background area and then it's surveyed for gamma radiation. If it gets a hit for gamma radiation then it automatically goes into the radium containing materials waste stream. If we don't get a hit for gamma radiation, then we survey it with a pancake probe to, to see if there's any surface contamination on it. Materials that don't have uh, radium in them are put into the surface contaminated object waste stream and then disposed of. Debris, including cardboard and wood containers, are segregated into a third waste stream for shipment to a lower fee disposal facility. Keeping workers safe throughout the cleanup was a top priority at preservation. From a health and safety perspective on the site, our, our biggest problem is contamination control. We want to keep the contamination in the hot zone. It's more of a problem than you would see at, at a lot of chem sites, mainly because you have radioactive materials mixed with all the dust on the site. In order to address this issue, uh, we've set up a series of contamination control measures including stringent decontamination for our personnel. This program involves a frisking where we have a particular instrument that we look for contamination on the surface of their protective equipment, on their tools, and eventually on their skin uh, itself. If we find contamination it is removed it is decontaminated. Some of our other contamination migration protocols include weekly monitoring of all support zone and decon areas for residual radioactive contamination, air surveillance programs. We run air surveillance uh, every single day. It consists of high volume air samplers. The samples are then analyzed for alpha and beta radiation to determine how much is airborne. We also have long-term samplers for uh, radon and gamma dosimeters on the site perimeter so we can assess the threat to uh, the community. 
The U.S. Coast Guard Pacific Strike Team conducted medical monitoring and collected daily dosimeter readings from all site personnel. Also, as part of the Contamination Migration Control Program, Coast Guard technicians conducted weekly alpha and beta radiation surveys in the support zone and on the street and the sidewalks in front of the site using a Ludlam floor monitor. Even with the stringent controls for radiation containment, workers still couldn't lose sight of basic safety priorities. Everyone focuses on the chemical or the radioactive materials, but in reality it's the, the physical hazard that is the biggest threat. We have a forklift, heavy equipment, overhead hazards. Uh, there's stuff stacked everywhere, uh, all the way to the ceiling. The ceiling we're estimating is about 25 feet. There's aisles in there that have shelving units that are 15 feet tall that have literally thousands of drawers in them full of gauges. The high concentrations of radon created by the radium containing instruments in the buildings needed to be dealt with before the interior removal could begin. So how we address that is we put a negative air machine inside the building. The air that is stuck through the negative air machine goes through a HEPA filter and that removes any particulate radiation that's in there. When I say particulate, I'm talking about radioactive materials that are adhered to dust particles. To guarantee the effectiveness of the negative air system, a series of real-time radon detectors were installed in the buildings. The team then designed and built a modular conveyor system to efficiently remove and segregate the building's contents into the proper waste streams. The efficiency of the modular conveyor survey system has escalated the project completion date by three to four months, thereby saving taxpayer dollars. Inside the structures, items were loaded onto the line in trays and then manually rolled down the conveyor. After passing through an opening in the water wall, which was again utilized for shielding, Items reached the survey and segregation area outside. There's a monitoring station there with two gamma scintillators there. It comes through, if it gets a reading that's more than background, then it goes into the radium containing materials waste stream, which means it's placed onto a second conveyor, then it conveyors down and it's dumped into a drum. If it doesn't get an inflection or anything above background, then we assume that it's surface contaminated. And based on our readings with the SAM 935 multi-channel analyzer, almost everything coming out of the building has the decay products from radon on it. Those items go onto a, a different conveyor and they go to a tip bin. Once the tip bin is filled up, the tip bin is dumped into a roll-off bin. The drummed radium containing materials are moved to an empty part of the building where they are weighed, cataloged, then staged. The materials are then shipped to a radioactive waste processing facility in Northern California where the drums are crushed and loaded into B-25 boxes. The B-25 boxes are then forwarded to the ultimate disposal facility. Before being shipped off-site, the surface contaminated materials in the roll-offs are confirmation checked for external residual radioactive contamination. Basically, we're looking to see if there's any removable contamination on them. So they take white samples of them and they look for fixed alpha contamination. And then we also scan them with a micro R meter to see if we have any hot spots. What we're looking for is to make sure that we're not intentionally getting any radium containing gauges in there. Although decontamination on the inside of the building was conducted, an assessment of residual radioactive contamination on the structure indicated contamination levels in excess of the action level, resulting in the demolition of the structure. 